friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new. I'm Nadia and today we're gonna talk about all things sex. If y'all know me, you know that I love the juicy, juicy questions and you guys asked me some really juicy questions on Instagram and we're gonna get into them because we love vulnerability here and we don't hold back. Just a disclaimer for those who don't know me, I am engaged, I'm not married. But before I got saved, before Jesus saved me, um, I lived a very impure life. I slept around with men and women. And even after I got saved, I was in a super impure relationship. And since then, I've struggled with porn, lust, masturbation, all of it. So I'm not married, but I do know a thing or two about sex. <laughs> And I'm not gonna get into it too much right now, but a little um, part of my testimony also is when I was 17, I was on my way to be um, an entertainer in the porn industry before the Lord pulled me out of that. Thank God that he did. Um, and I'm, I've also experienced sexual assault. So this is also coming from the perspective of somebody that's experienced sexual assault and has been very, very deep into sexual sin. Also, my fiance and I are waiting until marriage. We have waited until marriage and we are gonna continue to wait until marriage. I don't care how tempted we are. I We are both completely dedicated to waiting until marriage because we wanna do things God's way. We wanna do things the right way. And we believe that the Lord is pleased in that. And I'm gonna preface this video by saying that I might say some things in this video that you disagree with or you're like, mm, maybe that's a little bit unbiblical. Um, but if if I say something that you disagree with, feel free, please always feel free to message me. The best way to message me is on Instagram. So let's talk about it. There is absolutely no need to be disrespectful. There is no need to be unkind in the comments. There's no need to fight. Um, let's have let's be adults about it. Let's if we have a disagreement, let's have a fruitful disagreement and let's be civil about it. Okay, so let's get started. The first question is, does it hurt slash is it awkward the first time? Um, this is a, this is definitely like a case by case scenario. It's really different for everybody. Honestly, I was 14 when I lost my virginity, so I can't really remember, but I don't remember thinking like, oh, this hurts. Um, there are, I'm not gonna get into it right now. You can like research it on your own because uh, it's probably a little too juicy for my channel but there are ways um to make it hurt less which is like getting aroused like making sure you're you as a female are aroused like before it happens um as for the awkwardness i absolutely do not think it's gonna be awkward between me and my fiance and even if it is so what you know what i mean it's not like it's you have the rest of your lives to like to learn each other's bodies and to learn your own body too. So I'm not gonna say like, yes, it's gonna be awkward for you. This is Ollie. <laughs> so I'm not gonna say like, yes, it's gonna be awkward or like, it's not gonna be awkward because it just really depends on like you and your spouse. How far is too far before being married? People say no sex and don't go too far. What's too far? So this is a really common question. I've answered it in the past, but I'll answer it again just because a lot of people have this question, but how far is too far just is not the right question to ask. The right question to ask is, is God pleased in this? Is he getting the glory in this? Is he getting honor in this? Um, if the answer is no, then that's too far. This is another case by case thing. What's too far for one couple may definitely not be too far for another couple. So like for me and my fiance, sometimes it's too far to even make out. Um, and then other times it's not like we can control ourselves. So it really just depends. Um, but if the Lord isn't getting glory, if you don't think he's pleased in how you guys are acting, then that's too far. My fiance broke up with me less than a week ago and I feel dirty because I slept with him because we were going to get married in May. I don't know why he broke up with me, but I feel so guilty for sleeping with him before marriage. I only wanted to have sex with my husband. Sorry, that was so long. I'm just so guilty and hurt. I'm trying to listen to God. This one made me so sad because this is why it's so, so important to wait until marriage, guys, because even if you have that ring on your finger, 
you're not married. Even if you are 110% certain that you are going to marry this person, you literally never know what could happen. Like, like what happened in this scenario, the other person could change their mind. You could change your mind. The Lord could cut it off. Like anything could happen, guys. I know the pain of being sexually intimate with somebody that I thought I was going to marry and then breaking up with them. It's really really hard because you wish you saved that for your actual future husband um but guys waiting until marriage is so so important but also just remember that your identity in christ is pure it's holy it's innocent so the way that god sees you is that he sees you as pure despite your past so it's so important to learn to see yourself that way too it's okay to feel guilt over a mistake but as soon as you start feeling shame, then that's a straight up lie from the enemy and you need to rebuke that because there is no shame. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Doesn't matter what mistake you've made, there is no shame. The Lord redeems, he restores to 100%. He doesn't redeem halfway, he redeems 100%. And if it's in his will, he will give you a man. Or if you're a man watching this and you've made the same mistake, he will give you a woman that doesn't care about your past. Elliot does not care about my past. He sees me how God sees me, which is pure. Because I grew up in a toxic church, I often find myself viewing sex as bad. I'm trying to address this right now because I'm afraid it will be brought into my future marriage. Bravo! Honestly, it's so important um, to recognize that right now um, before marriage. I literally hate this so much. I hate it so, so much that so many people in the church, like, have this notion that sex is bad, like, even when you're married or, like, certain positions are bad or, like certain things are off limits i'm like i i can talk about that more if you guys want me to but i just nothing grinds my gears like that because guys sex god created sex to be good he created it to be within the confines of marriage he created it for our pleasure he created it to have babies <laughs> within marriage it is not dirty it is not bad sex is literally a form of worship he is so pleased when we're having sex with our spouse it is such a beautiful holy and god honoring thing okay i was laughing at this question <laughs> things to do to get in the mood when we start stuff i have a hard time warming up um <laughs> because this one like some of the other questions it's very much like person by person it like really depends on your preferences and i'm not about to tell you guys my preferences because i'm just not gonna do that i'm not like that vulnerable with you guys <laughs> that's only for my future husband to know but i do know that obviously men and women get turned on so differently um than each other men really get like turned on by sight and i think women um get turned on by touch and by validation like having your man affirm like how sexy you are or like um how you feel or like i don't know just having your man just affirm you verbally it is what really gets a lot of women turned on it's really different for every single woman but you could always try that i mean let's be real no woman is going to be turned on by a man that's just like he's just dead silent like he's not making any noise like he's not like affirming you like that's that's boring no woman is going to be turned on by that this is where experimenting and communication is super important you will figure this out i promise you <laughs> i am so afraid i won't like sex and it'll hurt a lot any tips to deal with those insecurities um so that's very valid because like sex in and of itself isn't like the most like pleasing thing for women let's be real a lot of women say that like sex in and of itself feels like nothing um obviously it's different for every woman for like different positions and stuff but um sex in and of itself isn't really like what can get like a woman going so having him just, like experiment with his hands and also with like the hurt thing like the pain that's if if it even hurts at all, it's probably only gonna hurt like the first couple times because it's like a, like a foreign substance like coming into your body. So it might hurt a little bit, but it's not necessarily like a bad hurt. Just make sure you find a man that is patient and is respectful. Is oral sex okay in marriage? Um, 
straight up biblically yes of course it is um once you get married your bodies belong to each other i know some people will disagree with this but y'all are married you can do whatever the heck you want as long as there's consent um and like honestly there was like this really big debate going around on tiktok like christian tiktok for a long time about like um what's okay in marriage what's not okay and some people were saying like some kinks aren't okay which i can agree with like whips what no like pretending or like actually hurting one another mm -mm. i don't see how the lord can get any glory in that and also like like restraining like restraints like i don't know y'all i don't know because that's like low-key pretending to like rape I don't know or like be raped so it really just just honestly you just have to pray about it and i like the lord will give you discernment and he'll convict you if you're doing something that's not pleasing or honoring to him but obviously like y'all can do whatever the heck you want like you're married <laughs> also i know some people will disagree with this and it'll make some people mad but you don't only have to do missionary like y'all can do whatever position you want like don't listen to those people like it's not biblical like nowhere in the bible does it say missionary only like nah nah you can do more than just missionary have fun you're married have fun people say that like certain positions are like worshiping like false gods or whatever but i'm like no you can't accidentally worship a false god like sex is worship like if you are a Christian, like sex is a form of worship. You're not going to accidentally worship a false god. Do whatever you want. How do you recommend making the first time less awkward for those waiting until marriage? Um, if y'all both waited until marriage, like it's just going to be awkward. Like it really is. Um, there's like no, like no way around that, but it's okay. Like if it's awkward, it's totally fine. Like you're going to look back on that and you're going to laugh for the rest of your marriage and you're going to have a lot of time to figure it out. So I guess, I don't really know. Communication is so important. Guys, do not be afraid. Look me in the eyes. Do not be afraid to communicate with your partner what you like and what you don't like. I know a lot of people who are afraid um, to speak up about like what's un if it's uncomfortable, if they don't like it or like what they do like, but it's not like, it's not awkward. It's not uncomfortable. Um, it shouldn't be uncomfortable to communicate with your, with your spouse. So my answer would be communication, communication, communication overcoming shame from sexual sin this is a really really big one um because it's so easy to fall into shame from sexual sin but guys it all boils boils down to identity in christ is your identity in christ or is it elsewhere um because placing your identity in christ means that you're not going to feel shame after um after struggling with any sin, it doesn't even matter if it's sexual sin or not. Um, by knowing that so far as the East is from the West, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, like, um, he does not look at our sins when he doesn't see sin when he looks at us. When he looks at us, he sees innocence. He sees purity. He sees righteousness. He sees holiness. He does not look at us and see our sin, guys. So if you're feeling shame from struggling with sexual sin or just any sin in general, there's got to be some identity healing in there because that's what it boils down to is identity. Maybe um, look up some resources about like how to heal your identity in Christ. Um, maybe I can look some up and find some resources for you guys. How has God helped you stay pure in your thoughts and desires? Um, by submitting all of my thoughts to him and honestly praying without ceasing because it's really hard and really uncomfortable to think in pure thoughts when you're praying um and when you're worshiping him so if you're always in that mindset and have that um that heart position of worship and of prayer it's gonna you're not gonna have impure thoughts as often because and even when you have them you're gonna be way more aware of them because you're literally in the middle of worshiping and praying so it's going to be a lot easier to submit those to christ and by also remembering that having sexual desires isn't bad 
guys, it's not bad. It's natural. It's human nature. God created us as sexual beings, but it's how we go about them and what we do with those thoughts. Do we act on them or do we submit them to Christ? Is it a sin to use birth control within marriage? I feel like God should decide if we have kids. Um, different people have different opinions on this, but I will say no. Y'all, birth control is not 100% effective. If you're on birth control and God wanted you to have a kid, you will have a kid. Nothing will stop God from giving you that baby, even if you're on birth control. It's just a good way to be pre preventative if you're not ready, but... I think the only way it would be a sin if God is if God specifically told you not to go on birth control during marriage and you still did because that would be disobedience. But birth control within marriage isn't a sin. Thoughts on boudoir? Boudoir? I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> Shoes as a surprise for the groom, like to give them after marriage. Um, girl, do it. I want to do it. I think it's sexy. I think it's, he'll love it. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as it's for like his eyes and his eyes only. And maybe like, obviously like female photographer, but do it girl. I honestly think like the same rules apply to like sharing like sexy images of yourself. Like if he's away or like, I don't know, like taking some photos of yourself. Like there's literally nothing wrong with that whatsoever. How to overcome your Christian boyfriend sleeping with his ex before he met you. Y'all, this is hard. This is a really, really hard one. I thank God like all the time that Elliot has never had sex before and that he's waited his whole life for me because I, that pain of knowing that he's like, they, they've like slept with some of, someone before is like gut-wrenching to me. I don't know. I don't know if I could handle that. Even just like thinking about it, like it's gut-wrenching. So I first just want to validate that. Like that is such a hard thing. It's it's something that you're going to have to consistently choose time and time and time again um, to see them how God sees them, which is pure. And also remembering, um, coming from like the opposite perspective of like being that person that has had sex before marriage, um, it would hurt a lot if, if Elliot like held that over my head and he like, I don't know, he just used that against me or like identified me with like my past mistakes. But um, not that he doesn't care it does hurt him like it obviously it would hurt anybody to know that like the love of your life has slept with someone before you and they didn't wait for you but I think really understanding the weight of the gospel and understanding the weight of redemption and knowing that they are completely redeemed in the eyes of God also by just remembering that they're a human being we are human beings like we are we are we have sinful desires every single day and sometimes we make the mistake of falling into those sinful desires so just having grace for his mistakes and also having grace for your mistakes but just lay those hurts at the feet of jesus and i really encourage you to just sit with the lord and ask what his opinion over the situation is and let him just speak that over you how do i initiate a conversation about how i feel about sexual boundaries first time having a boyfriend um girl you don't he needs to initiate that conversation if it is a godly relationship um i just believe that that's the right the correct order of things is that as men are the pursuers and leaders in relationship he needs to be the one that initiates that and he if he doesn't then i would say maybe that's like a little bit of a red flag but you can also just communicate with him of like hey i want to talk about this soon um what are your thoughts I know masturbation is bad because Christians say so. Why? You aren't joining with anyone. Um, well, first off, Christians say so for a reason because the Bible says so. It doesn't explicitly say so, but I did do um, a TikTok video explaining why masturbation is sin, and I will link it in the description. I'm not going to get into the whole thing in this video since I already have a video on it, so I'll link it in, in the description. Is it weird to pray for good sex in my future marriage, hoping to heal past sin and abuse? No, that's not weird at all. Good sex is very, very important in marriage. It's very important. Any married couple that you'll talk to will reiterate the same exact thing. It's really important. So I don't think it's weird or even bad to pray for that. Okay, to have sex after engagement or even before marriage? No, 
no 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 literally absolutely not i already went over this a little bit in the beginning but premarital sex is sin if you are not married and you are having sex it is sin and it is sin for a very 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 valid reason which i'm also not going to get into in this specific video but if you want me to talk about that in future videos or on my instagram or tiktok i totally can okay i saved the best question for last because this question like it made me laugh because of how bold it is but i absolutely love it do you ever miss having sex um yes like really um but at the same time like yes i've had sex but i've never had sex with somebody like obviously within marriage or with somebody that i really love so i've never like experienced what amazing sex actually is because i believe amazing sex is within marriage um because god is so pleased in that but like physically i mean yeah because obviously it's fun and it feels good and it's just it's, our bodies are created to desire sex so i love this question because like it was so bold and i absolutely love it <laughs> i absolutely love being vulnerable with you guys and talking about the uncomfortable and the awkward things that like nobody else is talking about because if you're not learning it from christians you're gonna learn it from the world and it's gonna be a distorted view of sex so i uh, this this is why i'm super passionate about talking about sex i've literally dedicated like most of my platform to talking about sex because i've seen that gap i've seen like not a lot of christians talk about it in a way that's open in a way that's vulnerable so i'm here to just bridge that gap and have those conversations so that's all the questions that i'm going to answer for you guys today i had so many questions but um like i said earlier please always feel free to dm me um i will try my absolute best to respond to it but i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and i hope that you learned a thing or two or that you were able to get a new perspective on something don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos love you guys see you next time